Hello students, this is Mr. Hart. And in this video, I want to finish up our unit on how we think like a computer and understand a computer by thinking about what a computer cannot do. That sounds like an interesting question because we've been focusing so much on what they can do. But I think it's important to understand the limitations of computers to truly understand what they are and what they do. So before we focus on what they can't do, let's first talk about all the amazing things they can do. And I probably don't have to tell you these. I mean, we've used computers in all sorts of crazy ways. I mean, we've sent people to the moon and into space, and we've sent satellites around the Earth using computers and using computations from computers. We've made amazing graphics and movies and CGI and all sorts of designs and all sorts of, you know, just ability to create in computers because we have tools and software that allow us to do amazing things. Um, we made things like Alexa that can take human speech and decipher what it's saying and then use that to determine a result and give you back something that you want. Um, all sorts of amazing medical applications use computers and you know CT scans and MRIs they all depend on computers for imaging and other things like that. We're starting to break into the world of VR, where you can basically have an entire virtual world at your fingertips inside a computer. And then another one, just a personal one, is I've been working on what's called style transfer in my own research. And um, style transfer is a way of t just giving a computer an image and it learns how to paint that image in the style of a particular painter which is just incredible. The, the things a computer do, can do is amazing. It can take all these inputs that we've made and we can design and create and make entire virtual worlds inside these computers. But all those things, if you think about it, depend on human input. We have to give the computer something first and then it does something amazing with it but it's dependent on our input. So that is um, what we want to think about when we ask this question of what can't a computer do? And the person that thought a lot about this is again, our friend Alan Turing. Okay, if you recall, he was the one that was working on the Enigma machine, Enigma machine and trying to crack the German codes. The thing he is also very famous for is again, a lot of theoretical stuff. He kind of made a theoretical com computer called the Turing machine that kind of similar to the, the eventual tape machines were. Um, but another thing he's very famous for is what's called the Turing test. And the Turing test is a way to determine if you have reached a computer that has completely become human-like, if you will. Because again, we're thinking about the limitations. And so we wanna see the point when a computer no longer really relies on a human for input, but rather can create its own things. Okay, so this is what the Turing test looked like and how Turing imagined it. So basically he imagined that, imagine, he, he, he described it with like a curtain in a room, but imagine you're, you're chatting with someone on a computer in such as a regular chat box or something like that. And so you're having a discussion and you're typing in input and you're asking, you know, what did you do and how was your day, that type of thing and having a conversation. And the question you're trying to determine is, is the person on the other side a human or are they a robot or a computer? And if you can make that distinction, then we have not reached um, computers that have human intelligence. But if it is no longer possible to determine whether that person is a human or a computer, then that computer has reached human levels of intelligence. Okay. Now, that, there's very many flaws with this particular test, but it's a good way to start thinking about how is a computer, how will we know if they're completely intelligent, right? We talk a lot about artificial intelligence these days. And 
really, again, if we no longer rely on human input but can create ideas and have discussions, if you will, by themselves, then they have very similar intelligence to us. Okay. Now, again, a lot of recent developments um, have made computers seem very, very intelligent. A lot of deep learning nowadays and other things like that make devices like Alexa seem, you know, almost human in intelligence. Okay. But again, I want you to think about how would you tell? What are the types of questions you can ask a computer that would show that it's a computer and not a human? Okay. A lot of the easier questions are things that computers can reply to now. Just even think about your Amazon Echo, right? Um, or talking to Alexa. You can ask it, you know, who who wrote this song and what album was it on or when did this movie come out or which actor was in this. Those are all questions that you can look up. They're questions you can um, quickly really find on an internet search. And so Aunt Alexa seems intelligent when you ask her the easy questions. But if you get to the more philosophical questions and the deeper questions, you'll notice that your Alexa very quickly has no idea what you're talking about. You know, if you ask Alexa about, you know, the meaning of life or something like that, it would have no idea how to respond. Okay, it might have some short, quirky answer, um, but it wouldn't be able to have a discussion. Okay, turns out Alexa is not the first, or any of these, you know, smart assistants now are not the first try at trying to beat the Turing test. Okay, are not, are only examples. Okay, there was actually a program that you will actually look at for your homework. Um, that was called Eliza. And this program was, you know, many, many years ago, back in the 90s, I believe, or maybe even the 80s. And Eliza was the first attempt to really try and beat the Turing test with some kind of artificial intelligence. Okay. So I want you to play with that. There's an online version of it now that you can go play with. Obviously, it wasn't online back then. But try asking it some questions. Um, it actually is better than Alexa in a lot of ways in some of the harder questions, but you'll notice that it's still got limitations. And so I want you to play with that and see if you can find what those limitations are. Again, because it's dependent on a lot of human code, you can see some of the um, things that it relies on and some of the failing points that it has when trying to have a discussion. Okay. So again, it's not like Alexa is trying to beat the Turing test, and it's not something that we necessarily have to do. That's not our end goal is being the Turing test. But it's something we have to always ask ourselves when we're looking at more intelligent, artificially intelligent machines. You know, what level of understanding are they really getting to? Okay. And so, what can't a computer do? Here are some things it cannot do. Okay. So the four big things a computer cannot do is, first of all, this sounds like a silly one, but it's actually a really important one for a lot of reasons. And if you ever take computational theory, you will learn why. But the first thing a computer can ever do is actually know if the set of instructions it's given, if a program it is given, is going to compute all the way. Okay? You've also probably seen your computer freeze or you've had an error code or that type of thing. A computer can never know beforehand if its instructions are valid which seems strange, but it, it has to run all the instructions before it knows that the instructions don't work. And so that's why computers have to crash or have to have an error or that type of thing because it can't know otherwise. It has to run. It can't tell you beforehand, actually, you shouldn't do that because this is going to cause the machine to crash. It doesn't know. It doesn't know if its instructions are valid, okay? which is important. And you can't fix that. It's a theoretical limitation. It has to run the instructions. It can't look ahead of schedule and see if it's going to crash. Okay. A second limitation, which has kind of a caveat, is it can't really be creative. Like I was mentioning, it's dependent on human input. CGI is amazing, but it takes a lot of animators and people putting in the exact virtual world that they want. Okay. But it, 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 it's dependent on human input, but, but they're starting to get better at um, AIs that are learning how to design things for themselves. Again, with like style transfer that I was mentioning where it takes a photo and makes it look like a painting, that's starting to become the inklings of some kind of creativity. The computer is designing something without tons of human input, which is interesting. So 
They're not truly creative yet, but we're getting closer and closer to intelligent machines that are creating their own things. Um, another one that again has some kind of a few theoretical limitations is that computers can't really write their own programs. Now, theoretically, there is a way that a machine can maybe have a program it starts with that writes other programs. But again, it's still kind of dependent on that human input of what program did it start with, right? And that was human written. And so computers, again, at the moment, can't write any of their own instructions. They're still dependent on some human instructions to get to that point. There has been some research on that. And it's been very, very limited, but there may be some potential for that being the case in the future that they write their own programs. But for now, they're, they're still dependent on humans writing their code. Then last of all, um, I still think we're not past the Turing test. A computer doesn't, it depends a lot on searching for things and looking at past human understanding. It doesn't have a way of really communicating its own thinking other than what it's seen from other human experience. Okay? But we're getting to some interesting times with AI. Okay? I personally have worked on deep learning and I've seen the amazing things it can do and I've also seen its limitations. And I think we, we show off the amazing things it can do, but there are some restrictions and some limitations on what's possible. Um, so I don't think there's going to be an AI robot you know, overtaking of the world anytime soon. But we're getting better and better. And for now, these are the limitations, but we'll see. Maybe someday soon we'll start seeing machines that can pass the Turing test and they're creative and they can uh, have intelligent conversations with us. Who knows? Um, but for now, I just want to point you to a video that's on Canvas that you should really watch that um, shows kind of where we're at with the state of AI. Um, and it's just this interesting demo that has these, you know, four little AI robots playing a game with each other, a game of tag, and it shows you how they learn how to manipulate the area around them in effective ways. Really fascinating stuff. This is where we're kind of at with the field of AI. Obviously, tons of other things you can do with AI, but it kind of shows the level of understanding an AI can get to at this time. So definitely go watch that video. Um, the link's right there and it is on Canvas. Okay, but that is it for this lesson and this unit. I hope you appreciate a little bit more of what a computer can and can't do, and a little bit more about uh, what AI is doing right now in the world of computation. It's fascinating stuff, and we're learning some really amazing things, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes in the future. Um, but hopefully that all made sense, and let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.